What the hell is this? Oh, that's... Wow, that's all my other work information. What the hell is it doing there? The hell? Oh, I still have... Ham sandwich power. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back. Oh, that reminds me, I have to get a cute coupon set. That's okay. Welcome back. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. I have a bunch of stuff to talk about because, oh, wow. Was that a hot garbage fire of a WWE pay per view? And somehow they saved it because, hey, listen, I think this week's Raw was good. It might be because I'm not judging it on other Raws. I'm judging it by what I just saw. And I would say I'm taking bleach to my eyes. I wish I could, but that's very bad. Because I like my eyes. They don't need uh, global relarcication re re or whatever they called it. They, I, don't even, I don't even know if that's a term. When I, you know, when I go to the eye doctor, I'm going to ask him that. I heard of this thing. Is this just like made up malarkey or what? But enough about that. Couple news and notes. One is that El Señor El Vagabundo Hobo the Hijo Dos Dos. I can never, I can never remember his name. You know what? He did pretty good at guessing those, those, mas those matches last night. Especially for Impact. He got three out of six right, but he really did get all three bonuses right. Therefore, because he got those bonuses, pushed him a little over the top. He was a 50-50 booker because the one match wasn't announced. So I won't hold him to that. But because he got three out, three out of six matches, but all three bonuses right. I was shocked. He's obviously inside the head of one Stephanie McMahon. When it comes to impact wrestling. And the esteemed Dr. Tom, he too was a 50 50 booker, but he actually, again, correctly predicted, as he likes to say, paying all the little bonuses, that being that of. The match of the night kind of was match of the night. That was one of the better matches, actually. Um, a Stone Cold Lock and the match you could sleep through. Wow. You know what that means? Dr. Tom and that other guy. Because I do have to change the locks in this house. But that's a whole other issue. They were again. Knew what step knew what was on the at least the desk of one Stephanie McMahon. So with all that being said, also some thank yous. Wow, to all the people that that watched, especially on Saturday night. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Thank you very much for your outpouring of watching. Uh, I think I had almost, I think I'm almost at 400 views for that. Thank you guys, because without you, I would, I would be showing cat videos. And you can only have so many cat videos because I am not buying thousands of dollars worth of stuff for my cat. She gets to hunt her lizards. We play a little bit. She's a clean litter box, food. She gets affection. That's all she needs. She gets water, a clean litter box. Every so often in the evening, she might get some, some outside time to go eyeball those evil squirrels that live in the backyard. And those cardinals, too, that just kind of pester her. If you've ever seen videos, I don't think I put those up. Maybe I have or I haven't. I forget. But that's okay. So all those people that watched, especially Saturday night, Thank you very much. You guys are true fans of the show. Um, I know WWE, they, there's a lot you cannot do and that I wouldn't want to try to do because they would say, you're out of here. And eventually, I'm actually shocked YouTube hasn't kicked me off yet. Wait, those over here, those are my poker chips. One day these will 
actually represent real money. Who knows? The way things are going here in Florida, we're going to be trading bottle caps with each other. Who knows? Alcohol will be a trading medium, as far as I know. Then I would be like the richest guy here, but that's a whole other thing. Um, or alum aluminum, and I'd be up there too. Um, but again, I'd like to thank these people. Again, if you say anything to me, especially if it's good, you get a little thank you video dedicated just to you. Sour Nubido! Thank you, sir. You have earned this. You won twice because you got this six count. Gale! You, sir, like El Marachi himself, are a master of the air guitar. Tico, you sir can oh you sir can listen to your briefcase boombox. Uh, 
I better make another no, that too. Terrible D. You, sir, can crawl right out of here. Sewage, thank you for your comment. Um, I know on Raw, we saw Stephanie McMahon Helmsley um, do what looked like a video from her bathroom. And her private ensuite bathroom looks better than any room in my house. So sewage, but you, sir, you're dirty because you always win by dirty pen. And then pansies. Paul, who's that? Maybe Stephanie was in Paul's washroom. Who knows? Again, it's still better than any room in my house. Because you know what? You want to take a holy sit in that on that throne, though. I just haven't used that one in a while. So let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. Wow, this was actually... I was impressed. I went in with very low expectations. I figured it would be a very traditional recap show. Not have any wrestling. Just show Larry what they made people, for some reason, pay for. But no, they actually didn't do that. So I'm actually shocked, and I have to pay the truck insurance tomorrow. Um, so this was going to start off as a recap of the I versus I match. Seth came out for a promo. Alistair Black said, said, said you're a bad person. Um, that crowd was very weird. It's like they they almost get their direction, but they're told to ham it up. So again, it was just odd. Who's that? I forget what that is. Oh, yeah, that's the date. 10, 24. Oh, yeah, that's um, Slime Anniversary. So, Alistair Black came out. Um, Buddy Murphy gets speed up, trying to stop him. Go to commercial, and then this leads to our first match of the night. Seth Rollins taking on Alistair Black. Um, Seth just works over the um, Alistair Black's arm, and wow, does he damage the arm. Uh, however, as m whoever on commentary properly noted, that Alistair Black still has three other limbs, and he just started to kick the brains out of Seth. Uh, Seth, he got black mass once, he got pulled out by Murphy. Murphy got black mass on the outside. Alistair Black was just throwing so many kicks around. I can do this because my cat, I don't think it's behind me because I just trimmed her nails. But she's kind of hiding somewhere. That's the rickety old, that's becoming the rickety old chair. It was all beat up. Eventually I have to, oh wait. Wow, it is tight. Wow. <laughs> uh oh. Have to fix that one day. Replace that one day more like it. Uh, that's uh, something else. Um, and so many kicks by Alistair Black. There was a super kick by Seth Standing. The, the, then he hit the low super kick um, on the top rope. Alistair Black was going for kidney shots, but no, Seth countered that with a, the draping arm. 
draping, draping arm ring across the top rope. Probably if your arm hurts, that probably is not thing. Not good. He does an arm ringer. And that leads to stomp. And that leads to the end of the match. Actually, overall, mainly because of Black's storytelling and his selling and the focal point on the one arm and, Sesco, and Seth going batshit crazy, this was, actually a, this was actually a good match. This was a surf and turf match. I mean, it had all the workings of a really good worked match. You could feel Alistair Black's pain. You could cheer for him when he would do kicks. Um, you wanted, just wanted to boo Seth. And trust me, they, they were saying some not kind things about Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins is going to have a talk with some of, the, some of those enhancement talents. Or either that or some of those enhancement talents were just said, Hey, listen, this is the last time you're here. Ding. You're out the door. So they said, ah, ha, 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 script. I don't need no stinking script for the night. Watch this on my way out, you son of a bitch. I'm gonna. But with all that being said, this is, again, really good match. Again, surf and surf match. I can't complain. At the end, um, Seth goes back in. Murphy just wrecks Black's arm. G goes into the post, into the table. Seth stomps on it on the um, table cover. Good stuff. If this leads to the next feud between Alistair Black, that would be really good. Alistair Black, he has the built-in story. He wants revenge for what, what Seth did to Ray. Makes sense. And and Seth deserves to be beat up. He's ruined the careers of so many wrestlers. Sting, Finn Balor, Ray Mysterio, Becky Lynch. I mean, the list goes on and on. <laughs> and that was a quick little joke in there if you guys didn't catch it. But that's okay. MVP does a recap about that. And he's in the back. He talks to our truth. Our truth has a frying pan. I guess he's trying to ward off ninjas with frying pans. That's odd. Um, MVP says, yeah, we want to have the 24-7 champion on our on the MVP show. And I, our truth is like, oh, who, me? No, like, no, we said the 24-7 champion. And our truth looks confused until Shelton Benjamin comes out of nowhere with some freaking flying kick and just pins him. I like this in the fact that it's a 24-7 champion, so it has to be defended anywhere. But it's not your, I'm coming at you from behind with a roll-up victory. It's a kick. Kicked him right in the head because there was a T-set. Lashley was coming to the belt. Lashley like, <laughs> I don't care about that 24-7 title. Shalom Benjamin got it, though. It was one kick, no roll-up, regular pinfall. I like the fact that they did that. That's a good ham sandwich of a 24-7 championship match. And then back in the ring, you see Shelton Benjamin, part of um, Hurt Incorporated or, 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 or Pain Incorporated, whatever they are calling themselves. I always forget. Yeah, you have to like remind me a few times because you only see it once a week and sometimes you just want to forget about it. You just want to blank your mind from watching Raw sometimes. That's a that's a whole other thing. Yeah, this was pretty this was fun. Uh, Cedric and Rick shake him up, they're like, huh. Ah, well which two of us and um MVP says which two of the three of us do you want to take? It's like, no, we'll take all three of you on. Mustafa Ali comes on. I'll tell you what, Mustafa Ali was a little ahead of his time. Because he has that cool light up LED cover mask. That's so tempting to purchase. Because you know that would be cool. So they're not going to let me wear a bandito mask at work. I could wear that. Ooh, let's see here. So while I'm talking about this, I'm going to multitask a little bit. Um, so with this, we come back from break. And we have a six-man tag. It's Cedric, Alexander, Ricochet, and Mustafa Ali taking on Bobby Lashley, MVP, and Shelton Benjamin. This was actually a really fun match, too. Um, it was good. It was good to see Cedric go strike heavy, but that's a very, very bad idea. Especially when you start to do that against the likes of Bobby Lashley. That's not what 
it's gonna work. Uh, from there, you know, speed up MVP. I'll tell you what, it was good heal tag team work. MVP, I'll be honest, she has the safest. Um, what do you call it? Body slam of anyone. Because like, he picks you up and he sets you down like flat on your back. He, he, he protects your head. Oh, wow. You can't actually. Oh, I can get an awesome face mask. That's pretty cool. Uh, not for 12 bucks, though. Screw that. 12 bucks for freaking face masks? the hell are they expecting? There's a fiend one. A macho man. A fake Ali mask. Last week. Kane's there. Listen, if I want any face mask, I want the freaking one. Wow, stuff's so freaking expensive, man. But, yeah, that's, that's enough about that, though. That was kind of cool to look through. <laughs> Mankind. That's actually pretty cool. Mustafa Ali, Nick Gator. At least it's something different. That's okay. Didn't see why I wanted so. Back to this. Because God knows I get distracted way too easily anyway. But with this, and again, he has the safest power slam ever. He puts you like super flat on your back. I I, I can't say enough about that. He cradles your head. He's not going to drop you. Because sometimes, especially the women, sometimes they look like they just drop each other on, the, on their heads. Uh, Shelton hits a big back body drop. MVP stretches Ricochet and just does a vicious cross face, which is so good to see. And it's not the collegiate cross face where you get it, where you gently crank. It's a freaking Taz cross face. Just whips his forearm right across your face, which is awesome. Right in front of the camera, too. Um, MVP does get hit by the X Factor by Mustafa Ali because he eventually gets a hot, hot tag. Lashley gets low bridge, so he's on the outside. Um, Lashley, he was held up by Cedric and Ricochet. So MVP could do his, um, not MVP, but Ali could do his jumpy thing on him. And then it's spot fest time. Everyone gets to do their spot. Eventually, Ali. Does a neck breaker into the 450. And I want to say it was Shelton. No, MVP ate the pin. So who knows? Maybe, we, maybe we'll see MVP go for the North American Championship eventually. Because I, I still don't know what's wrong with the Paul Cruz. Coronavirus. But again, that was a good match. I can't. I mean, that's a good cheeseburger match. Tell me to Randy Orton promo. Uh, we saw Christian on Zoom. Had a little interview session with Bianca Belair. And then Peyton Royce and Ruby Wright showed up. And, and where's Billy Kay at? I'll tell you what. That does not bode well for poor Peyton Royce. So the next match we have is Peyton Royce taking on Ruby Wright. And we have Bianca Belair in Ruby Wright's corner. Uh, Peyton, it's kind of your basic match. Like it's the rope-assisted leg Nelson, which is great. Ruby Wright fights back. Uh, Peyton Royce either screwed up intentionally because she tried for the dirty pin. And like the ref was literally saying, right, like right there watching, it's like, no, you can't do that. Oh, I'll go to the ropes. No, I said you can't do that. And she gets stuck into a ro uh, roll up. She did hit a big kick, but then there was the riot kick. And the thing about this match, this match just was really quiet. They really need Billy Kay's lungs at this match because the crowd was the crowd was even for being a script said you better cheer for these people. They're like, this isn't exciting. Billy Kay adds so much. She's so bombastic and vociferous. Those are some big words for you guys, but look them up in a dictionary. You'll know exactly how I'm describing Billy Kay. She just has that charisma factor. She has the lungs for it. I hope she's okay. 
because I know they were away for a while in Australia because of the fires. Then there was this whole coronavirus. I hope she wasn't on that boat trip. Ooh, that would suck. Maybe she just overslept at Sean, at Sean Spears' house. Who knows? In, insinuation and innuendo by me. But this match, eh, it was okay. It was a ham sandwich. Then we have Angel Garza. Uh, Charlie interviewed, and Char Charlie again kind of kind of wet herself once Angel Garza steps up to her. Andrade, and of course, Lena Vega ha has to be the caddy one. Then this leads to our match. Angel Garza and Andrade versus the Street Profits for, for a chance at the title. Um, Andrade and Angel Garza, they just start off. They just start to beat the tar out of Street Profits. It's, it's not even in the match, and the pants come off for Angel Garza. That means he actually means business. He's not screwing around. They do the wishbone to Dawkins. If you don't know what the wishbone is, one guy lays down on his back with his feet in the air. One guy takes one leg. One guy takes the other leg. Whoop! Wishboned. Um, the double teamwork. They have the double tags in. So now it's Andrade and Ford of the Street Profits. They do a pretty good double teamwork. Um, listen, Angel Garza and Andrade, they're no slouch in their double team mark themselves. Uh, Garza goes for the double hammerlock, and switch that to the armbar. Very good technical wrestling. And this was a good, this was a fun match, too. Andrade did the stretch. However, that got countered eventually to the hip toss. Uh, Dawkins. You got the hot flying tag. That's always just, it's just funny to see when Ford, like, literally, like, leaps. He's, like, literally, like, within reaching just a basic tag, but he, like, does this, like, super leapfrog leap. Um, Dawkins actually did the pounce a couple times in this match. He did a yeah, great-looking flapjack, too. That was awesome. Um, did something else. I forget what it was. The Street Profits, they, they did not hit. No, no Doomsday device for the Street Profits. Yeah, kicked down. Ford eventually got Garza. And I'll tell you what, I don't know what Ford did, but he did like a spinning a version of the Twisted Bliss with a frog splash. So I'll just say it's a twisting frog splash. That looked really good. And it's like, wow, even Dawkins like came out and said, dude, that was amazing looking. How'd you do that? Ford probably said, I don't know, dude. It was either that or yeah, that or I was going to die. You'd be surprised how many, like, top rope moves can be innovated by the fact of you not wanting to get hurt and you not wanting to hurt the other person. Like, well, if I do it this way, it looks so cool. It does absolutely nothing, but darn, it looks fun. So this was another, again, another good, a good, solid, it's a good, solid match. Um, I don't like the fact that Garza and Andrade lost because then they're kind of out of the tag team picture for a while. It's still a good cheeseburger match. And there was an Asuka versus Sasha Banks recap. And, um, Garza and Andrade, they're not arguing, but Zelina Vegas there, she's like, w w you two aren't arguing for a change? Wow. Then it was uh, Bailey and Sasha Banks came out, um, cut a promo. They're both double belt or quattro belt team, whatever they call them. Asuka and Kyrie saying Asuka's pissed off because she just flat out called Sasha a thief. Stupid. So then we have the next match, Kyrie Sane versus Bailey. This is weird. Because a lot of people were predicting Kyrie Sane was gonna lose. Because generally when you're leaving, you got there's the old phrase in wrestling, you go out on your back. But yeah, Kyrie Sane versus Bailey. Um Kyrie Sane started hitting some chops on Bailey. One of those she was a fake chop. She raised her hand, Bailey cowered in, got rolled up. That's the way a roll up should work. That's the best use of a roll up I've seen in a while. Then there was like a, like, Bailey got her arm stuck. She was holding onto the top rope, but she had it like fully draped over. And Kyrie Sane did a hip attack, and literally, like, Bailey caught her arm between her. It's not probably the worst thing, but I'm sure it's not the most pleasant feeling. Um, so she's on the outside. She's comforted by Sasha Banks. We go to commercial. Come back. Um, Bailey starts to stomp a mud hole into Kyrie Sane. There was a suplex. Kyrie Sane's good at that inside cradle, though. 
Uh, then there's the draping axe, the draping axe handles to the double stomp. Oh, that was that was actually great. That double stomp. That like, she draped her across the rope, but there was a draping axe kick. That's what Kyrie Sane did. And then she went to the top rope and like double stomped, and like she landed right on Bailey's face. Again, the face of a Romulan villain. Uh, then we have, then we see Shayna watching backstage, and she, I don't know Shayna. Shayna's being fed the most scripted lines, and they're doing a number on her, which I feel bad for because I've met Shayna Baszler. She's actually really she was really super nice at the meet and greets. Very pleasant woman. I thought the makeup very very cute looking too. She she does. Shayna Baszler looked like, I've said this so many times, she, she just looks like a normal woman. Like, she could, like, walk down the street, just wave to her. No clue who she is. But yeah. The makeup, though, they don't do a good job. She looks very Brooklyn brawlerish now with her own merch that's all ripped up. Um, the cameraman. This cameraman is either the perviest cameraman around. Or Kevin Dunn has given him special instructions to make sure you get close-ups of every woman's ass and crotch whenever you can. Because that's all you saw. You almost saw a little, I think even with Peyton Royce, you almost saw a little more too. Indeed. Uh, then there was, let's see. There was a double stomp on the face. That was so vicious. Uh, Bailey hit a hangman arm breaker. That was pretty cool. Uh, Kyrie Sane has a spinning back fist. Vicious. Right to the face. Like, the timing on that has to be perfect. Or you're like breaking an orbital bone or nose. Or at least you're getting a big bruise on your jaw. Which is not good. Uh, then there was an insane elbow. But Bailey got her foot on the rope. You could tell it's like, ah, oh, she she rolled her right next to the rope. You know, I, my cat could have stretched the ropes that way. And then, let's see what those that, that again. Bailey got her receding with that freaking weird knee because Kyrie Sane looked looked to duck, and Bailey just did a knee lift right to the chin of Kyrie Sane. That was her receding from earlier, I guess. But. Sane kicks out, and then that drops Kyrie Sane. Then I hate saying it, but then the insane elbow is a little bit different than the macho elbow. Macho elbow is kind of flat. Insane elbow, she like flies and literally goes flat. It's actually really great to see. But Bailey hits the macho elbow, two count. No, you cannot have the macho elbow be just a signature move. It has to be the finisher. Macho Man spinning his grave. Wheel. Then there was a belly to belly attempt at a roll up. And then that was the match. It was a pinfall. Kyrie Sane wins. Whoa. That was such a great moment for Kyrie Sane. Um, sayonara. Hope things go well back in Japan. Or either that or you're saying. Every so off, um, this was actually a really fun match. This is another surf and turf match. And I think WWE does this every so often when someone seems unhappy and feel and like they're like, okay, I want to leave. Every so often, WWE tosses them that bone once in a while. And then they're like, here, we'll let you get this one. Just, just stick with us for a few more months, or at least till the end of your contract. And then they're like, well, I just beat this person, and I'm on TV. Yeah, I'll just stay a little bit longer. They toss that bone out. Paul Heyman was a master of that. I like, I like in the Jim Cornette show. Like, uh, it came up, if Paul Heyman was a liar, and Jimmy was like, yeah, he was. Are you kidding me? He was the biggest liar of the bunch. Wait, and <laughs> I like that. And actually, there are stories of uh, Paul, e, of Paul E. Dangerously. Uh, Paul Heyman 
Um, again, talking people to working without money, without contracts. Uh, for some reason, they use like copyright songs forever. And ECW lied to companies. I mean, like the list and and every time you hear a story, it sounded like he did he did it so pleasantly. It's just one of those things. He's just really good at it. Uh, then there was Drew McIntyre. Uh, cut a promo. Dolph shows up. I was um, Drew's like, I'm done with you. Wow. Gives him a headbutt, leaves the ring. It's like, come on, it can be whatever you want. I want to fight you again. And, it, and it's like, oh, is this going to be that Goldberg moment where he starts talking trash? And Drew McIntyre, like, claymores him another time in the ring. And then he'll say something else stupid and, like, he'll just get, like, stomped or something. But, no, so there's going to be a rematch for SummerSlam. And I don't know when or if they're going to have Women's Evolution. Or if, cause I don't think August, unless they have something, know something that I don't know about crowds and stuff, I don't think August would be good enough for a two pay per view match from WWE. Because one's either, one's either going to be really good and the other one's going to be really bad. Because I can't see them both being good, or they're both going to be stinkers. So we'll see what happens there. And then the big show comes out because of promo. Then in the main event of the evening, you have, oh, well, it's the big show. It's a great big show tonight. Taking on, I hear voices in my head. They call me. They understand. They understand. They come for me. Randy Orton. Um, big Show starts off, he just manhandles. Poor Randy Orton. Go outside. I'll tell you what. I've never seen a man that big do a spear, and Randy Orton sell that spear like, like he broke ribs. That was amazing. And then Garza and Andrade come in to jump the Big Show. Viking Raiders show up. Uh, those two teams brawl somewhere. They leave. Uh, big Show tries to set the table. Big Show... You've been in this business long enough. You know the rule of tables. You set up the table. You go through table. Um, so he set up the table. He put Randy Orton on the table. Uh, he got up to the second rope. He's going to do a Vader bomb, but Randy Orton moved at the last time, so Big Show himself goes through the table. That's all Randy Orton needed because then he RKO'd him, but the Big Show kicked out of that. From the With the Big Show, that's predictable. That's actually really good. That's something you could, that's believable coming from the Big Show, him kicking out of one RKO. Yeah, and he's a big dude. He can do that. Um, then, of course, there's more chair shots to the ribs, the back, a draping DDT, and a second RKO. And he get, uh, Randy Orton gets a pin, one, two, three. Again, in a fairly believable match. This was good. This was a good cheeseburger match. And to finish off the big show, there was the punt. And that sends us off. And wow, I actually went through an uh, even number of pages for a change. That's rare. And I'll tell you what, this was a good solid cheeseburger of a raw. And I'll tell you what, I honestly think that this raw. And every so often, WWE does this. Shame on you, WWE. But every so often, and it's rare, but it does happen, that the Raw after a stinker of a pay-per-view is actually better than the pay-per-view. That was the case again. So this week, this is a more tranquilo week for me. Tonight, uh, I'll be posting this probably tomorrow morning. Tuesday night's live streaming. I think I find... Uh, I'll just check whatever the schedule is and, and do things accordingly. I'm not going to screw around with that. With a bad guess. Wednesday is going to just be a recap of AEW. Thursday, I am off. Friday is Friday Night Smackdown. It's Pizza Hut for me that night. And Saturday and Sunday, I'm off. I'm happy. I can relax. 
We would like to thank everyone, especially those I mentioned at the very beginning. If you two would like a video in your honor, and eventually be like Bomb Slicks and be a character in the Daytona Beach Bumfight League. A couple of ways to do that: you can subscribe, comment, email, like, or chat with me in Discord. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. And oh yeah, funny story before I leave. We have a new coworker at my job. Guess what the first thing I did was? I shook her hand. I'm such an evil person. Spreading coronavirus, even though I don't have coronavirus. My other coworkers does. And the only Publix around me that has black cherry soda that might be closing down for a little bit because one of their coworkers had coronavirus.